Okay, guys, we're going to get started. What we're going to go through today is we're going to go through really kind of the mindset you need to have to be successful with LinkedIn. And what I find, especially with people in the insurance industry, is you know they've heard a million times in a million places that they have to use LinkedIn. And they've gone in and they've set up a basic profile and they kind of hit the wall at that point. They're not really sure what the next step is, what they need to do. They just know that they've been told they need to use it. And um, you know, I, and I, I get a lot of these calls from people who say, yeah, I've been using LinkedIn seven, eight years, never gotten a result from it. <clears throat> and I always ask them, well, what are you doing on a daily basis with LinkedIn? And they always kind of seem stumped. And they say, well, I created a profile. Isn't that all there is? So I think today's webinar is to just try to kind of enlighten you on the different facets of LinkedIn and really what you should be doing and what type of mindset you need to have to keep up with your competition. Because I think that's the most important thing to recognize. It is a competition. There are insurance professionals out there who are experts at LinkedIn. And they've been using it now for a good 10 years and they're getting results. And I think anyone who's an entrepreneur and who's hungry to grow their business those are the types of things that frustrate us. So I think right off the bat to understand <clears throat> how to get to the next level, you have to understand that there's kind of three components to LinkedIn. There's what I would call the resume aspect. There's what I would call the marketing aspect. <clears throat> and there's what I would call the database aspect. So there's three kind of parts to it. And you can't, <clears throat> excuse me, you can't um, utilize the database aspect and the marketing aspect if, the, if your LinkedIn profile isn't set up correctly. So what we need to do today <clears throat> is just kind of clarify you know, these three sections, how they work, how you can get results from them, and then moving forward, you guys will have a better understanding <clears throat> of what you have to do to be successful. So like I said, Part one of LinkedIn is it acts as a virtual resume. Um, you know, obviously people, when they meet with you, uh, after you've talked with them, there's a good chance they're going in and they're Googling you and they're trying to find more information about you. Most likely your LinkedIn profile is going to be one of the first things they find. And that's where the virtual resume aspect comes into play. People, if they find my, <clears throat> excuse me, if they find my profile, they're going to find a well-written summary section that explains what I do, why I'm different, how I'm unique. They're going to be able to look at some videos that review my services in detail. They're going to be able to review where I've worked, some of my publications, and then obviously see that I've been endorsed by thousands of people for the services I offer. I know that if people find my profile, that it's going to act as really good branding and it's probably going to get me the sale. So I guess my point is, is that needs to be your attitude as well. You want to hope people find your LinkedIn profile. Or more importantly, you're going to start to learn how to drive people to your LinkedIn profile. But all of that sounds good, <clears throat> but if your profile is not set up to convert traffic, you're not going to get anything out of it. So that's kind of the first thought you have to ask yourself. When I set up my LinkedIn profile, how did I set it up? <clears throat> that I set it up to convert traffic, to kind of tell my story, to brand myself, or did I create it like a resume? Most people just kind of created it like a resume. They never thought of the actual marketing side effects of it. So what you want to make sure you're doing um, is obviously going into your profile, and we'll talk a little bit in a few minutes about the summary section, but you want to make sure that you've set up your profile so that, one, it looks professional, but two, it really clarifies who you are, how you help people, why you're unique, and if somebody wants to work with you, how can they contact you, right? Those are kind of the four key bullets of a good LinkedIn profile. To start, my suggestion would be go in here, make sure everything's complete. Make sure it has where you work. Make sure your contact information is in. And again, we'll talk about the summary section in a few minutes. Make sure that's in there. Make sure you've listed where you used to work and obviously where you're educated. 
not because it looks good, but because the more information you put on LinkedIn, the more likely your profile is going to be showing up on other people's profiles, kind of like free advertising. Data is king on LinkedIn, so you want to put as much data as you can on your profile. Once you've created the profile and it's in good working order, what happens next? Well, you start connecting with people, right, guys? This becomes part two of LinkedIn, the database aspect. And this is where 95% of the people hit the wall. They have no idea what they're doing, and they really have no idea how to utilize it. So to try to keep this quick, because I only have a few minutes, you really want to be connecting with as many people as you can. Yes, even your competitors, okay? The reason being is the more people you connect with, the more people you have the ability to market to. If you don't connect with people, you can't send messages to people. See, the thing with LinkedIn that's amazing is the marketing tools they provide. Probably 1% of the people on today's call have ever used the marketing tools. That's because they haven't done the second part, which is the database aspect, to be able to utilize it. But I just want to kind of tell you about that so you understand why I'm telling you to do part two. So what you can do with LinkedIn, guys, is you can go into your connections up here up top. And if you've gone in <clears throat> and organized all the people you've connected with into folders or what they call tags, you'll see I'm coming in, I'm clicking tag, I'm clicking you know, auto insurance potential clients, I'm hitting select all, I'm hitting message. Within about six seconds, I can send out a message to up to 50 people at once, okay? And when I send that message out, <clears throat> I know the probability of it being read is very high. So long story short, guys, LinkedIn lets you send messages out to all of your connections. And somebody who's an expert has gone in to all of their connections and they've put each connection into an organized folder. That allows them to go into the marketing area, select that folder, and send a message out to them very quickly. So why would we want to do that? Well, the reason we would want to do that is I have found that if I send a normal email to 1,000 people, I get about 45% of them reading it. If I send that same e message <clears throat> via LinkedIn's messaging tools to 1,000 connections, I find that 85% of the people read it. So we're talking about dramatic increases in people viewing it. Now, why is that? Well, that's because when you send a LinkedIn message to somebody, it goes to their email, but it doesn't look like an email. It says you've received a message from one of your LinkedIn connections. People are awed by that for some reason. So they're very likely to say this must be important. I should read it. Whereas with email, you get so many emails every day, and email's an email, people kind of tune it out. So my point is, is the LinkedIn messaging features are very powerful because we know that there's a huge high percentage of people paying attention to it. That doesn't mean that if you solicit people, you're going to get results, but what it means is, is at least you have a crowd to talk to. So what I suggest, <clears throat> what I suggest is that everybody needs to Obviously, A, be connecting with as many people as possible. Once you've connected with these people, you want to make sure that you're going into the connections area and that you're setting up what are called tags or folders. If you select the per first person here, you can see the tag button. And here you'll see all of the folders I've created. I have literally thousands of them. So I have thousands of connections. You need to go in, create some folders which is pretty easy, and then go through each of your connections and select them <clears throat> and click the tag button and put them in a folder. So if you're a full service insurance agency, I would imagine you're going to have folders that are somewhat like this, current auto insurance clients, current business insurance clients, current life insurance clients, potential clients, friends from college, neighbors, whatever. Create organized folders because the reason – now. Most common question, Ken, that sounds really time consuming. Yeah, it is time consuming. But keep this in mind. You should have been doing this for the last 10 years. It's hard to make up 10 years in five minutes. So there is some time 
you know, you're going to have to put in to do this. But the more detailed you make it, the more results you're going to get. Because if you're, like I said, full service shop, something big happens within the auto insurance industry, you need to send out a message to all your auto insurance clients or maybe potential auto insurance clients, boom, you know you're sending it out to the exact target market with an 85% read-through rate. That's the numbers you want. So, <clears throat> again, I, I could do this webinar in 24 hours and I wouldn't have enough time. But I think my, my, you know, my point is, is that, one, you really need to put time into setting up your profile. Make sure it looks professional, but also make sure it tells people who you are, how you can help them, why you're different and unique, and obviously how they can contact you. Two, you want to make sure you have a system in place where you're connecting with all of your clients. Um, one of the things that I do is every time I have lunch with somebody, I get their business card, or maybe they email me or call me, I go right in, I click connections, I click add connections, I click any email, and I type their email right in here and send them an invite to connect. That way I know that, okay, boom, I'm going to connect with that person whether they do business with me today or in a year, but now I can at least drip on them and I can send them stuff. And more importantly, they can go look at my profile and see that a thousand people have endorsed me. There's a thought process involved, a strategy. And again, like I said right off the bat early on, <clears throat> most insurance professionals, they created a profile and that was where they left it. They never thought about what they should be doing. They never thought about any type of strategy to implement. And a lot of times, these things are very simple. They take 10 seconds, 20 seconds. If you can implement it into your day-to-day, -day, your profile will grow. You will get thousands of connections, and then you will have a pool of connections that you can market to. And that's what I've done, and that's what's kind of created, you know, a lot of distribution for me. So my point is, is get the profile set up. Connect with as many people as you can. I don't care if they're actual clients, prospects, friends, classmates. You never know when that stuff can pay off. Then make sure you organize all your connections into folders. This is going to let you utilize LinkedIn's messaging tools. Most common question, well, Ken, do I really need to put all these people in folders? Can't I just connect with people and then send a message to whoever I want? <clears throat> that sounds good. But what will happen is, is you'll have to go in and manually select all the people you want to send a message to. So instead of it taking six seconds to send a message, it's going to take 12 minutes per message. And trust me, you don't want to be spending four hours sending messages out. You'll be sending duplicate ones out. They won't be grouped correctly. <clears throat> I was once there, and I learned my lesson, and I did it the right way. So in my opinion, that's the importance of organizing your connections. It allows you to be much more efficient. Remember, this isn't like a life-altering thing. It's just something that I feel in 2015 gives you a high percentage chance of getting results. You don't want to commit your whole life savings to it per se, but it's another marketing tool you can use to hopefully get more clients. But I think the key, of course, is to be efficient. You don't want to be wasting 10 hours a day. You want to be wasting 10 minutes a day. If it doesn't work, okay, you wasted 10 minutes, right? That's always my mindset. But the percentages say it's going to work. So what I'll leave you guys with is some tips on setting up a summary. Because, again, I think that this becomes the most important part of your actual profile. This is the part where people are really going to read it and really kind of think about, okay, who is, you know, who is this guy and can he help me? So here's my summary section. You'll see that there's only about four or five sentences. In my opinion, that's all you need. You know, so your summary should really, you know, tell people, you know, who you help. You need to pinpoint that, how you help them, and how they can request your help. So <clears throat> just to give you an example, most insurance professionals, when I look at their LinkedIn profile, this is what it says. You know, it says, hi, you know, I, we are a full service insurance agency. We offer auto, home, life, and health. We can offer you the best products at the best prices. Contact us today. That's what I tend to see. When I call those people up, I say, tell me about your agency. How do you make money? They say, well, we do everything, but we specialize in risk management for restaurant owners. That's our real, you know, prime client. That's the client we want. 
well, how come your LinkedIn profile is very generic? I don't know. I never thought about it. So my point is, is that that guy's profile should not say, we're a full service agency, blah, blah, blah. It should say, we are a full service insurance agency that specializes in working with restaurant owners. We have unique services and products that specifically helps restaurants manage the risk, workers comp, et cetera, liability, et cetera. Call, call us today at you know 777-622-2222 or email bob at bobsinsurance.com for a free consultation. So my point is, is you really need to get specific on LinkedIn because you want to stand out. You want to come across as the guru. To be very generic is not going to get you anywhere. There's friggin' 78,000 insurance professionals with LinkedIn profiles. You need to come across as different. So again, pinpoint who you help, pinpoint how you help them, <clears throat> and most importantly, put that phone number in there, put that email address in there. Do not assume these people are gonna do research projects to figure out how to contact you. Um, it doesn't have to be long. As you can see, mine is very short. My depth is in the videos. People can click on the videos and watch the videos. That gives more depth. You guys can certainly put PowerPoints there, videos, all sorts of PDFs. That can act as more depth to the content. Um, so that being said, <clears throat> hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick presentation today. Um, what I suggest for those of you that don't know me, check out BenefitStore.net. We do offer kind of some good social media management services. If you feel that you haven't gotten to the next level, you may want to look at those and you know at least get a consultation on them. All right, guys.